Good morning, everyone. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent. I don't know about you all, but I'm glad to be here this morning. Glad to be in the land of the living. Glad to be in the presence of this great God of ours. Let us stand and get ready to just worship him in spirit and in truth as we've been known to do so. Our choir is already in the law, and we're going to go to our responsive reading. It should be found on the inside of your program. It's coming from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verses 23 through 26. And when you found it, give a hearty praise the Lord, if you will. Praise Amen. Amen. And we find these words. Does everyone have a bulletin? Okay. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is Do this as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. All together, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Our hymn of praise, alas, and did my Savior believe.
lord. My lord, my lord. At the throne. Good morning, Black Chapel. Good morning, Big Black. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, that Bible verse has been on my mind ever since I walked into Sunday school this morning. And I, you know, I, I was sitting up morning and thinking, you know, why the Lord put it on my heart. Yeah. You know, we had a, a really blessed Sunday school this morning from, from 9 to 10. I, I feel like I've already been in church service. Amen. 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 But as for me and my house, yeah. and, and you know, when, when I'm, you know, as right now I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, this particular verse, and it, it makes me think about what's my responsibility? Yeah. What's my responsibility as a man of God? Yeah. What's right. my responsibility as a Christian? Yeah. All right. And, you know, Right now, in all of our lives, God wants to enlarge our territories. And the question, you know, I'm asking, am I stuck somewhere? Are we stuck somewhere? Are we stuck on me? You know, as Christians, that's just the beginning. Me, yeah, we're just the beginning. We're the start, yes. We secure our salvation, but what about our house? What's our responsibility to our house? And then, where does our house stop? Is our house just those under our roof? Does our house just extend to our church family? Where does our house stop? And again, look, God is speaking to all of us. And he's let us know it's a work for us to do out here. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father... We just like to say thank you. Thank you we thank you, God, so much. Yes. Mm. We thank you so much, Lord, for another opportunity to come into your house, Lord. We thank you so much, God, for another Sunday morning. Lord, we're thankful for your spirit. For your opportunity, Lord, to work through us. God, we're so thankful that even when we can't get the words out of our mouth, Lord, that the Holy Spirit and your son Jesus utter on our behalf. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, that's all I got this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Lord, amen. Amen. Black Shovel, this concludes. Mm. That's all right. Thank you, Jesus.
How many of you know God is keeping up? How many of you really, 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 really know? I'm not talking about that gun that you have, that, that nine or that Glock. I'm not talking about that medicine you may be on. I'm not talking about that gated community you might live in. I'm not talking about that expensive car, that great house you might be hiding behind in. But God is keeping us. I don't know about you all, but it's good to be kept by him. Because can't nobody keep you like him. When God keeps you, ask, ask Moses about it. Ask David about it. When he hid in the cave of Machpelah. Just ask Elijah and them when, when all the other prophets was gone and, and he thought it, all of them had been destroyed. Amen. God is a keeper. Yes, Somebody in here today needs to know that God is keeping us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To our visitors that are visiting with us via internet, we greet you in the precious name of this great God of ours who is a keeper. And he will keep you if you allow him to. I don't know about you all, but sentiments go to Deacon Latica. Because you know what? I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Early this morning when the Lord opened these eyes right here, yes, sir. I looked up at the ceiling because I wasn't able to do that because I was in a bed. Somebody didn't have that. I was able to put clothes on. I was able to go to a table like Christine just said, and there was food on the table. Yes, sir. And my prayer to him was simply this, Lord, I don't know what we're going to do today, what you're going to do. But I, when we enter into the gates of your sanctuary, we want to come in praising you. When we got to Sunday school this morning, those of you that was in Sunday school, he was there. He met us there. He brought us on out here. See, this is why this man poured his heart out, because when the Spirit does that to you, it's not you doing it. And we have been transformed and, and, and brought out to here, and we are lifting him up. We are worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Now, do we have flaws and faults and all those things? Yes, we do. But this great God of ours is working these things out. He is keeping us. You're not keeping yourself. And some of you all had the audacity to walk in here and act like you and plop right down on one of these things like you brought yourself in here and you kept yourself. But you have not. I was out in my garden the other day cropping collard plants and checking my cabbages, and the Lord just blessed me with them, and I was able to bring some to people. And folks would tell you, well, if you're going to do something like that, why don't you charge folks? For I said, it's not all about dollars and cents. You love, and you serve, and you do the best that you can, and you let God do the rest. When those storms raked through here last week, and I saw all the trees, and, and I was out in my garden, and, and, and trees was growing everywhere. And, and I could show you one that fell on, on the property in our backyard, but I'm here to tell you, God is a keeper. He's a sustainer. If you let him, he's a provider. They're not just singing and opening their lips just to be singing, but they're singing because there's a purpose. There's a message that's in the song. I hope you get it. Your name may not be on Black Chapel's road. And you may be visiting with us in this sanctuary. If you don't mind standing, we want to acknowledge your presence. We're glad to have you here. We're glad to have ones that hadn't been here in a while. No shame to it. But you're here now. And I see some students that have come back, went off to college and went to school, and they're, they're back. And God has kept them and brought them safely back. Because every time I look up and down the highway, look at what's happening. Accidents. Folks are being taken out of here. But God is still in the blessing business, and he's keeping. And we just certainly thank God for you, because we love you. the announcements come I think I, we see sister Bennett is back and she she had been out with surgery and everything but God brought her back as well and I see it in her head. Yes, indeed. amen God is a keeper as I said but 
something is going to be said, something is going to be done. You just allow God's spirit to have his way. And if you walked in this, this door, because my prayers have already been answered, you're not going to leave out of here today the same way you came in Jesus' name. You're going to be better because of him. You're going to be better because he plants that in you. Not because of what we say, but because of what he says and what he's doing. So I, I, what I'm trying to tell you is put a smile on your face. Put a smile on your heart. Love the Lord with all your strength, your might, and your soul. Because this may be your last time being here before you're stretched out here. And if it is, you can at least have said that you went out worshiping and praising this great God of ours. Now, does that not make sense? Okay, yes, it does. I thought it did. So it's love. Okay, now. Good morning again, Black Chapel. Our announcements are as follows. Our Black, Black Chapel Easter program celebration will be held on Sunday, April 17th at 9 a.m. Please join us as we reflect on our risen Savior. Amen. Practice for the program will be Thursday, April 7th at 6 p.m. and Saturday, <coughs> April 9th at 10 a.m. Please contact Sister Elena Tate. Please raise your hand, Sister Tate. And her number for the virtual members is 601-906-2903 for additional information. Again, the practices are Thursday, April 7th at 6, and Saturday, April 9th at 10. Church Women United is inviting you to a scheduled Zoom meeting. Topic, Church Women United Noon Day Prayer Meeting. That's on April 8th at 12 noon. There's a Zoom link printed on the program Virtual members, if you're interested, please comment and we will get the link to you. Also, join the Church Women United for their prayer meeting the first Friday of each month. It includes January, February, March, April, June, July, September, October, and December. So there are three months they won't have. It. We look forward to a blessed time of prayer and fellowship. For additional information, please contact Evangelist Brown. And her number is 601-672-7356. We have a thank you card. If I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't thank you enough. So grateful there are amazing people in this world, people like all of you. Thank you very much for your prayer, Sister Bertha Bennett. Amen. Amen. The Mississippi Community Lupus Warriors will host the second annual Lupus Awareness Walk on May 7th at Davis Road Park. The event time is 8, to 8 a.m. to noon. Registration opens at 8 and the walk begins at 9. There's a $25 registration fee and a t-shirt is included if you register by April 24th. And you can look on um, Eventbrite if you'd like to register or see myself or Sister Chandra Young Rose uh, for additional information. Okay, our birthdays, with our, anyone with a birthday in the month of April, would you please stand? Amen. Our April birthdays. Happy <laughs> birthday member. Jones on the 6th, Angela Cooper. On the 7th, we have Mother Gladys Anderson and Sister Valerie Bell. And on the 8th, we have Brother Lester Watkins. Happy birthday, Amen. members. Amen. Our prayer list, we have Amen. Sister Gwen Johnson, Brother Patrick Gaddis, that's the brother of his sister Elena Tate. We have Sister Bertha Bennett, so happy to see you. Brother Turner Curry, and Brother Joshua Henderson, Sister Jesse Bell Williams, mother of Brother Curtis Watson, and all those we are unaware of, as well as our bereavement members. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and have a great week.
be. Yes. Only you can answer that question. Does your soul say yes? Does your soul really say yes? In spite of obstacles, in spite of this, in spite of that, does your soul still say yes? Does your soul still say yes? My soul says yes. I don't know about you all. Troubles get in the way, calamities and all these things, but so my soul still says yes. We'll go where he wants us to go. We'll do what he tells us to do. You know, our God, he, he tells us to give because he wants us to give with what? A cheerful heart. He loves a giver with a cheerful heart. So now is the time that we can give. We know how God has blessed us. And pressed down, shaken together, shall men give into their bosom good measures. God always blesses us. He, it doesn't always have to be monetarily. He blesses us with strength. He blesses us with peace of mind. Because he gives us peace that surpasses all understanding. He gives us comfort. He gives us security. He gives us everything that we'll ever need. And the reason I know he does it, because he's done it for me, he does it for you, and he's spoken it in his word, which cannot lie. He says, I'll supply all of your needs according to his riches and glories by who? By Christ Jesus. I know I got some Bible readers in here. Our deacons are going to come at this time. Good morning, Black Chapel. Good morning. Beautiful day for the soul to say yes. yes. Uh, Reverend Thompson has already set protocol for this point of our service. Uh, time for uh, um, tithing, offering, and yes. benevolence. And let us be sure to give cheerfully. Yes. Amen. 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 Us as you are in charge. Amen. Shall we stand for the rest of the year? <laughs>
stand, please? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we come at this hour and at this time. We thank you for this offering that was just taken. And we know, Father, that you're going to bless it. And, Father, we know that it's going to fulfill the statement for which it was taken. We thank you for the ones that have given, those with a cheerful heart, those that even had a desire to give but had not the funds on this time. We pray, Father, that on the next time they would be able to give and they would give with a cheerful heart. We pray that you would bless those, Father God, bless our members that are on our sick and our shut-in list, Lord God, those that are incarcerated physically, spiritually, and mentally, and those that are bereaved at this time. Father, keep them as only you can keep them. Bless them as only you can bless them. In the rich, the mighty, the powerful, in the matchless name of Jesus, we do pray and ask all blessings. Amen and amen. All things. All things. Come of thee, oh Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. 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 Amen.
we are. And we have nothing directly to do with our being so blessed and so fortunate. Because we have lived long enough, and we have come to know enough that all of our blessings comes from the Lord. And it has not been because we have been so good nor so careful, but it's all because of his grace and his mercy. We serve a God who cup is always overflowing with grace and with mercy. And we are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise and be thankful and bless his name because the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures unto all generations. Nothing can break nor alter his truth and God's word is truth and it is a safe thing to stake or to invest your eternity in God's word it is a safe thing to go and to continue to go God's way no matter how things may appear to be in going his way, one thing you can always rest assured of, and that is his way is always the right way and the way in which he will have for us, his people, to go. And just by your very being, and where you are at right now is physical evidence that you are heading in the right way God's way he commanded us to keep the seventh day holy and to forsake not the assembly of ourselves together and when he gave that command and that commission, you cannot find in small print an excuse to go along with it. No matter how small a print there may be in the writings, one thing you will never ever find, and that is an excuse for not going the Lord's way. Excuses are not accepted because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus declared that no man shall see the Father but by way of me. Going the Lord's way is the sure way to go. Let's give this great Quiet, another round of applause. For blessing our heart. And always with so meaningful of songs. Songs with a message of truth that declares the will of God toward us, his people. There is a message in a gospel song that God will always have of us to give ear to and take heed to. What a wonderful place you're in. What a wonderful moment. What a blessed presence. We are fortunate. I can't say that enough. And it began with just having the mind and the desire to be 
where you are right now. Just the mind and the desire. I know sometimes we may have the mind and the desire, but for whatever reason, we just can't be. But you woke up this morning with the mind and the desire to be and you're here. You're here. Nothing that the Lord allowed to alter your desire and your will. And that is a blessing within itself. Because all it takes is just one knock on the door. One telephone call. Or one letter in yesterday's mail to have altered your way, your desire, and your will. But the Lord kept it, whatever it may have been, or could have been, away from you. Yes, we are here by way of God's grace and by way of God's mercy because the enemy has an unlimited numbers of weapons of wiles and fiery darts at his disposal that he could of if it had not been for the Lord on your side to use against us to prevent. I would just like to just ask one question of all of our men in the church this morning, our male factors, regardless of how young or how old you may be, to just stand. All the male factors, no matter how young nor how old. I want a good pictorial view. I want our women to have a good pictorial view of. Just, just take a look. Yeah, I want all the men to just look around. Look at you. Just take a good look around and look at you. And women, I want you to give yourselves a hand. <laughs> Amen. Because if it had not been for your steadfastness, this day may have never arrived. Amen. I say unto our women first, you have truly held the ground. You have done an unbelievable work along the way in making sure that the presence of God through you were represented in the sanctuary every Sunday morning somewhere. Amen. All over the world. Yeah. But today is another day that the Lord has made. And just look at how the men are coming out and rejoicing and being glad in it. <laughs> you may be seated. What a beautiful sight for so eyes to behold. Any kind of eyes to behold. Amen. Amen. And my heart is thankful and grateful to just be a part of you men and I just want to personally say that I, I, I appreciate 
I appreciate you. And your presence here alone on Sunday morning. Don't know what you may bring in any aspect. Don't know your reasoning behind being. But one thing I do know, each and every Sunday morning when I look out across the sanctuary and see you, that I'm blessed. And I thank God for you coming and for you being and for you bringing you. Because that is one work the Lord will not do. Move, rearrange, direct, but not bring. It is a free will offering that we have to offer ourselves up unto the Lord. And I thank God for all the free will offerings that our men offer up unto the Lord every Sunday morning. As dim as, as my eyes are and as shadow as my mind is, even I can see and I can know and just imagine what the Lord sees and what the Lord knows when he look at you, when he see you. You can't beat God given no matter how hard. You may try. And the bumper crop gift that God desire of each of us is the giving of oneself. Once you've done that, you've done your best. I know I need to move on, but you make me feel proud to be a man. <laughs> I, I want you to know that. When I see you on Sunday morning, you make me proud to be a man. And that is the type of effect that each of us should have on one another. We should make one another feel proud to be one of your kind. Male and female. That is the effect that you have on me. And I look forward to that effect every Sunday morning. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the 144th number of Psalm. The 144th number of Psalm. The first through the fourth verse. And there we will find these words. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight, my goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield 
and he in whom I trust. Who subdueth my people under me? Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him or the son of man that thou makest account of him? Man is like to vanity. His days are as a shadow that passeth away. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, my goodness, my fortress, my high tower, in whom I trust. Man is like to vanity. His days are as a shadow that passeth away. Let us think on this thought this morning. I want to talk about David's death bed. Confession. David's death bed. Confession. Black's Chapel, the authorship of this 144th number of song is credited to that of David. Though David did not write all of the songs. But there is no doubt in my mind that this 144th number of song was written by one who knew beyond the shadow of any doubt that all of his blessings that all of his wisdom, that all of his strength and that his grace and mercy cometh from the Lord. This song was written by one who knew beyond the shadow of any doubt that except the Lord keepeth your house. That except the Lord be a part of your coming and your going then all of your labor is in vain. This 144th number of song was written by one who knew beyond the shadow of any doubt that if it had not been for the Lord on his side, then he would not 
be. That if it had not been for the Lord on his side, that he would not be. You see, this 144th number of songs was written by David after David had been delivered out of the hands of King Saul. This 144th number of song was written by David after David had been delivered out of the hands of death. And Black Chapel, once upon a time, a dying man's confession or a dead man's confession was considered and accepted as unbreakable and undeniable truth. That is one of the reasons why when people used to receive word that someone was passing away they stay their distance because he may say something. He or she may say something. Once upon a time, a dying man or a death, dead man's confession was considered as undeniable and unbreakable truth. And that reminds me of a true story pertaining to World War II. For during World War II, out in the South Pacific alone, over 20,000 soldiers between the age of 17 and 27 lost their lives while doing amphibious 